All right, so let me put this into concrete terms and show you some use cases of teaching core. And as I go through each of these, you can sort of understand that it's very wide reaching, far reaching the impacts of using a blockchain in the very narrow sense that, that we talk about for digital identity only. Um, but the applications are very, very important in different, different industries. Okay, so first on the list is uh, healthcare data portability. Okay, so um, you can imagine, particularly in this, um, the age of COVID, uh, we have to think about how, if we were to build a healthcare data repository, or where medical institutions, medical practitioners can upload and share data about trends that are happening in society. How can we create such an infrastructure that allows data to be securely exchanged and data provenance and have all the benefits that I mentioned, right? Okay, well, applying blockchain in this way gives us that almost out of the box. If this technology can be embedded in the applications that doctors and practitioners use, then they could, with a click of a button, upload this data, have providence, have control over it, the security of it. They can upload it into Google Cloud. They can upload it to a cloud provider here in Japan. They can upload it to a cloud provider in some other countries and not have to worry about that digital agency problem that I mentioned. Uh, and in fact, um, as coincidence would have it, um, there was a press release released today of one of Keychain's partners, uh, Topan Forms, who has implemented a first stage uh, version of such a system where they're taking medical data from uh, a user's handheld wearable device and transmitting that data into a cloud and the data is secured on the cloud until it's being read and, and, and decrypted on the cloud. Uh, and this is just the, the beginning of that because you can think of many ways in which that, this could be extended. One of my favorite examples is, um, I would love to see nursing homes uh, use biometric monitoring on patients while patients are asleep in, in, in their care in the nursing home and just use that as, a, as alerting functionality. And that needs to be securely transmitted. And this can be done in a way that protects both the, the, the patient and the, the hospital from, from uh, the liabilities of uh, cyber cybersecurity hacks. A second use case is simply secure collaboration uh, within the enterprise context. You can think of any company where the company is dealing with documents and emails and chat messages, even voice chat maybe. And all that data needs to be stored on a network, a cloud provider. However, if the company happens to operate in, happens to operate in multiple countries, let's say the United States and in China and in Japan, Singapore, I can imagine that the, C, the CTO or the CIO of that company has to think about this question very, very deliberately. Is how do I normalize my company's cybersecurity risk globally in a consistent way. Okay, so this is one thing that we are particularly excited about. Uh, and we are embedding Keychain's capability into uh, some of the very well used and very well known uh, Microsoft products like Microsoft Office and, and, and so forth, so that we can allow users to very simply get the benefits of end to end encrypted data digital signatures, when an email comes into their office application, immediately our technology will, will flag the email if it's from someone they don't know. Uh, if the email is missigned, if the email is not encrypted, we give the user an immediate warning about this. Right? And so you can see this being used to help organizations and enterprises to protect themselves against very, very common techniques to hack uh, their, their employees. Okay, and getting towards the, the last of the use cases, uh, smart you know, mobility and smart cities. Now this is a use case which is almost entirely uh, data uh, centric. Right? 
So you can imagine that you know, the current conditions of an automobile at the time of, say, an accident on the road is very important for insurance's purposes and what have you. And so if that data can be authenticated, even if it's not transmitted in real time, after the fact, if you can verify that the data was in fact the data that was present at the time of the crash, then that has a huge, I think, um, ramifications into the space of insurance and, and other types of way, other ways to monitor sort of civil engineering applications. Uh, another use case, uh, this, is, this is an example of a problem of a project that we've implemented as well, a couple of times actually. And this is applied to the problem of peer-to-peer -peer trading uh, of, of, of e-power, uh, electricity, and other sort of resources. Uh, here in Japan, that's a very, very interesting uh, and hot topic today. And so the, the concern here is that how do we monitor for example, the, the amount of solar energy that has been harnessed by a household using solar panels and to accurately attribute some credit towards that household um, based on the, the, the real metrics, the real median, uh, metering of the solar energy that's been harnessed. So you can imagine the smart meter itself having a digital identity on the blockchain. The data is being sent over on a much cheaper network than they currently use archived on the cloud, and then that data can be then transformed into some sort of digital asset credit, which is given to the households, uh, and that can be peer-to-peer -peer exchanged. Uh, or the energy companies themselves can uh, accrue these digital assets and then trade them on exchanges themselves. Okay. But you notice here, the important thing is the data, not, not the asset, right? The data, the asset comes from the data that's collected. And that data needs to be authentic and it needs to be um, secure. Uh, video gaming, people talk about this a lot. Uh, you can use, I can imagine a world a space where the content that's created by a, an artist is signed and encrypted in such a way that only the people who have been given access by presumably paying that artist for rights to, to listen to their content, can get access to that data. And so what this, the impact of this is that this will then shift the focus to hopefully getting artists, the, be becoming, artists becoming the, the main beneficiaries of um, their work and being paid directly uh, based on the fact that the artist can control access to, to their, their, their files and content. And then the last use case I mentioned is the digital asset platform. And now we come back finally to finance, right? We come back to what I use, what we know most um, blockchain groups will sort of focus on is how to do remittance and payments. But having solved the, the data provenance problem first and this related agency problem, now you have a much, much stronger, much more secure and private financial institution, uh, uh, financial infrastructure on which you can do better ways to um, remit uh, monies, create new assets uh, and sort of new sort of instruments um, that you can exchange within the space. So many applications of the same concept, we're just applying the same modern blockchain architecture to all of these different approaches, uh, all these different problems and you can see new solutions come out from these. Um, these that maybe enhance cybersecurity, maybe they reduce cost, but most importantly, they create new patterns of business in which um, we can sort of see a new economy arising out of this. And most importantly, we can hopefully see an end to situations in which we have to ban entire networks and companies just in order to um, secure our data on the cloud and on network and so forth. Okay, so that is the range of use cases that I talked about. And if there's, anything, if there's anything that I can sort of leave you with is the message that we need to be able to manage trust in the digital world. Uh, because as we know, the digital space is in fact uh, untrusted and rightfully so. 
Uh, the message I have for you guys is that the technology to do this exists right now. It is such far reaching and powerful that it can affect the, it can uh, impact the way companies and countries can manage their own data sovereignty, even in the face of a, a uncertain and dis distrusted digital world.